21 yards. I mean, I can't see a better position for James to score from. It's absolutely perfect from James Rodriguez. This guy is the free kick king for us. Now back to James. Chance for him to score. He strikes it so well. James Rodriguez. What? The power behind that shot. I haven't seen a shot like that in career mode for a long time. So we are back again with another episode of the Leeds United Career Mode Series, episode number 19. We're still in the top four, somehow. Don't know how we've pulled this off, but things are just going according to plan this season. By the end of today's episode, we should be in the January transfer window, which is always exciting because we're going to try and generate funds to make signings, potentially make signings already. I'm not too sure about that, but we're definitely going to do a lot of transfer window stuff. And as always... Get involved by dropping in your transfer suggestions in the comment section below. And if you guys are enjoying the career mode content, keep the support coming in by dropping a like on the video. That really helps the channel grow. Subscribe if you're new around here and let's get this underway. Press conference and get involved by dropping in your questions down in the comment section below. First one of the day. Cavani and James Rodriguez are over 30 years old. They're going to decrease in their overalls. So who are you going to replace them with? Good question. Edinson Cavani, that is something we've got to consider. He's gone down by one in his overall. His performances on the pitch have been top-notch. He's going to definitely give us a really good season. But next season, we might have to consider looking for the replacement. I don't plan on selling Cavani, actually. Next season, we might just use him as backup and have Augustine and a brand new striker up top. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe we go for a certain Norwegian, but that's something I don't want to think about until next season. So for now, we'll keep things focused with Cavani. Really happy with him, not even thinking about his replacement. On the other hand, James Rodriguez, he's only 29. He's going to give us another couple of great season, I'm sure. And maybe like after season three, that's when we consider replacing him. So I'm pretty convinced he's going to last in our team for a long time so i'm not even considering a possibility of a replacement so there you go that's my opinions on this topic next up give some credit to ben white he's had some insane tackles and blocks in the games played today not just in that episode pretty much the entire season ben white has been top notch and the best part about him He's growing at an incredible rate. 80 overall already. He's gone up by three ratings this season. Look at some of his stats increases like jumping, reactions all going up massively, interceptions as well, defensive awareness up by three, shot passing. Like this guy is growing at an incredible rate and on the pitch his performances just continue to impress me 80 rated already and let's hope he can keep this kind of form up he's he's been one of my favorite center backs in this fifa cycle i'm not even kidding next up this episode proves that james is a pure cam play him there that's his best position brooks has got pace so he can play at central midfield a good shout but honestly i prefer having brooks in that cam role because that pace is so helpful with you know dribbling with brooks creating chances getting in behind and i don't want to change that dynamic and also james has been superb in that right central midfield role there's literally no reason for us to switch up the formation mess around with the tactics because i'm really happy with the way james is playing and the position he's been in so we're gonna keep things this way with that press conference done Let's move on. The Colombian superstar James Rodriguez continues to pick up more Player of the Episode awards. Last episode, he scored a worldy free kick and also an incredible long shot. So, James has just been playing at an incredible level. Picks up another Player of the Episode award. Now, last episode, I remember you guys asked me about Thiago Almada. I forgot to show you what his overall in all is. He's 77 rated at the moment. He's going to be so expensive to sign. About 30 million. And at this point in time, we just can't afford that. I'm definitely leaning towards bringing in Thiago for the free in this window. And hopefully we can get that done. Honestly, I've been trying to sell a lot of these players, but they're just not willing to move. And it's so frustrating. Like the amount of money we could generate from like selling these players that I'm not really interested in keeping is crazy. Like we'll free up at least about 50,000 in wages and we'll generate about maybe seven or eight million in our transfer budget so i'm hoping we can sell them on eventually soon because i'll need the money if i want to sign players like thiago on a free and all so i'm hoping we can get that done in today's episode we're absolutely cruising with our season objectives and i'm hoping in this episode we can keep it that way maybe more goals with augustine and cavani that'd be nice of course all the transfer stuff will be discussed towards the end of the episode because for now we've got premier league games to focus on as we take on sixth place leicester city they're about five points behind us, so they're 
going to give us a tough fight. There's a reason why they're in the top six and it's going to be an entertaining game of football. Let's continue our incredible run of form. Now, this is how I've got my team set up for this one. Cavani and Augustine up top. Brooks and Cam. Billy Gilmore comes back in the team. We've tried Pablo. We've tried Shackleton. I honestly prefer Billy Gilmore and Hamas together. They're so much more dynamic compared to Pablo, who's, who's aging, so we'll give him that. But I prefer this, and this is probably right now my best 11 on the pitch. So let's hope it can get the job done against Leicester City. Okay, now we've got a bit of an issue on hand here, because every time I load up into this game against Leicester City, the game just crashes out on me, and I don't really know what to do. I've been trying to fix this issue for about an hour, trying to load up the mods again, downloading the mods again, but it's just not working. So the only solution I've found that fixes things is that we got to simulate this game. So I'm going to simulate this one with, of course, my main team. And let's just hope we can beat Leicester City. Let's see what happens here. We do thankfully get ourselves a 2-0 win, but at potentially what cost? Because Ben White has picked up an injury. Let's hope it's not too serious. Ha, huh, a couple of days. That is such a relief. Transfer off of a Mujica, which we are going to accept, but... Now the issue should be solved. I should be able to play the next few games, but I don't really know what was causing it, you know. The game just kept crashing as soon as I loaded up into it, you know, when you get that screen where they show the stadium. So with the mods, occasionally stuff like this does happen, but I'm hoping we can just move on normally from here on. Now with all that mess behind us, hopefully the game starts actually working for me as we take on Chelsea at Ellen Road. And this is my team for this one. Pretty much the same exact 11 I put forward against of course Leicester why make changes when things are working so that's how we lined up let's get right into it and finally the game is actually working what a relief it's it's literally six in the morning now and I started recording at like 3 34 finally I fixed the issue with the game and we can just get on with business that is the Chelsea team we're up against they've got a good team that back line with Varane and Jimenez should be illegal Front three is a bit dodgy with Morata and Pulisic. Pulisic is good. Willian, I'm not too convinced with. But overall, they've got a good team. I know the Chelsea team are decent, but we aren't a slouch either. We've got some really good players. Players in top form like James and Augustine and Cavani and all. Let's hope we can make that count and make it two wins in two in this episode already. Here's Billy Gilmore on the ball. Looks for Augustine. Big chance for him. He goes for goal. Almost scores. A worldie there. Kepa Ariza Balaga pulls off a pretty incredible save, but we came super close to making it 1-0. Okay, now Chelsea looking to respond because we've been dominating the game so far, but Kante has broken through here. Still in Golo Kante. As we were talking about Ben White, this guy is just incredible. The perfect challenge almost always. I'm so glad we signed him after his loan spell because we'd have missed out on a quality young centre-back. Here's Brooks now on the ball. Incisive pass to Augustine who turns his man brilliantly. Still Augustine strikes it fairly well but can't get it past Kepa. But the passing was decent from us there. We're creating good chances against this Chelsea team which I am proud of. We've just got to be more efficient in the final third. Here's Brooks now out wide looking to get past his man. Does so easily with a shoulder drop. Still Brooks now looking to go for goal maybe. Brooks oh my god. What's David Brooks just done there? That is one of the best finesse shots I've seen this year on FIFA 20. Literally, top left corner, no chance for Kepa. David Brooks with a screamer. And I remember, his first goal in this series was something similar as well. Was it against Chelsea as well? I think it was, I'm not too sure. But David Brooks, oh my word. What a strike. What a freaking strike. I mean, look at that. David Brooks unleashing it. Top left corner, Kepa can't get there, 1-0 Leeds United, just the start we needed, the fairy tale continues with Leeds. We may have a bit of defensive issues to deal with here as it's Kovacic on the ball, Des makes that look so easy, what a fullback we've signed. And now, on the break here, we could be scoring another one, here goes Edinson Cavani, can he create a 1v1 chance for him, he can, Cavani strikes it well, but Kepa yet again dealing with the situation, but... We've created so many good goal scoring chances in this half. I'm really impressed with the way we've played. Let's just keep it going. Half time against Chelsea, no complaints whatsoever. We've just got to keep doing this in the second half as well. And Golo Kante has literally just broken through my defense there, which is not too good because I see William and all in good spaces. Kovacic, wow, just wow. I remember using him in the Chelsea career mode and he was so, so good. And that's just sheer class from the Croatian. What a volley past our keeper. Fair enough, N'Golo Kante, he literally ran 
halfway across the pitch and brilliant cross and Chelsea back in and the second half is going to be a lot more interesting I suppose with the scoreline being 1-1 Chelsea have responded Matteo Kovacic looking to play this one out wide for Willian who's been really quick down this right flank and it's a big problem to deal with but Jamal Lewis there coming in with a sliding challenge and rescuing in what could have been a clear goal for Chelsea fair play Jamal good defending Oh, Jimenez has turned me there. What is going on? No way are we going to concede from that attack. Thankfully, we don't. But Chelsea in the second half have been head and shoulders better than us. And that's something we've got to change. We're going to take this one short for Billy. Go on against your former team. Let's see what Billy Gilmore can do. A nice shimmy to open up a bit of space. Now it's one fight of all players. What? What, is, what, what have we just witnessed? Our centre-back, Juan Foyt, has just scored to put us 2-1 up. The most unlikely of goal scorer coming up clutch for us. The Argentine scores and leads lead to one. I, I'm, I'm shocked. Remember last season when Ben White scored for us in a crucial game to win it, win it for us? This is similar. Foyth coming in clutch this time around. He gets his moment to shine. What a strike with that left foot. And he's right footed, by the way. We lead to one. And it's a real shot for us now to secure the three points in this one. Frank Lampard is furious and he should be because... Our centre-back has just done that against him. Last few minutes of the game, we've just got to be cool and calculated and composed. Benitez clears that one easily. Oh, it's gone right to them. Cross comes in. Should be ours. What? Have we just conceded that? I don't even know what to say. Loftus cheek with a backwards head. Oh, come on. First of all, how was that cross straight to Ruben Loftus cheek? Why didn't Foyt get a touch on it or a head to it? I don't get it. That is such a cheap goal to concede and now it's to all. I'm gutted. We've just dropped points for nothing. This is honestly infuriating and it's just unacceptable from us. In a game where we created so many more chances, we deserved all three points. We bottled it at the end. To concede a goal like that from Loftus, shake oh, it's, it's a disgrace. But yeah, frustrating. And this is probably the reason why we won't finish top four this season. We just make silly mistakes in games like this. Maybe it's the lack of quality compared to the big teams, but I don't really know. But it's so annoying to deal with. My fault, that probably. In the grand scheme of things, a draw against Chelsea is probably a good result. In fact, it is. But the way it happened is what pissed me off. But anyway, still third in the Premier League, still in the top four, with a comfortable two-point lead over Spurs and Chelsea halfway through the season. Who would have thought we'd have 43 points we're doing our very own Leicester City story and I think the main reason why that's happening is the fact that we can field our first 11 practically every game of the season. Like that's what we've done so far and that's really benefited us. For now though we've got a game against Watford which I am going to simulate because I'll have to use my second team in this one because look at this guys it's the December period. There's only like a two day gap between every single fixture so we'll play the game against Sheffield but we'll sim the game against Watford with my second team and this is where you guys will find out where our squad lacks because we don't have a competitive squad to use every three days and this is where problems could arise as we could end up losing this game. That's exactly what's happened here. We don't have a competitive squad to play in three or four competitions and that's something that could hurt us in future seasons but for now I guess it is all right for the most part. We can handle it but yeah look at this already an injury for two months. Gelhart is going to be out and Ketia is out already so a bit of a frustrating one. Anyways up next we're up against Sheffield United is a few transfer offers coming which I'm not really entertaining. We're going to get right into this one against Sheffield. We'll play this one. Most of our players should be back on full stamina, so that'll be nice. It's the winter period as I just spoke about and it's going to mean that we're going to have to rotate the squad a fair bit. So Shackleton and Pablo Hernandez come in. Apart from that, I'm just using players that aren't fully fit, but that's, that's what we've got to do during the December period. It's really tough on the players and this is where teams win championships because the big teams, they can have a full squad that they can rotate every other week, but we can't, so... We're going to struggle during this period. Let's see if we can pick up a point from this one with our players on half stamina. Don't know how this is going to go. That's our team. Let's get the three points against Sheffield. And after this, we've got the transfer window opening up. Last year, during the winter period, we struggled so much because our squad was even worse. And we had to play like 65 rated players and all occasionally in these kind of games. This season, though, it's a lot better for us. We're playing the likes of Shackleton and all who are decent footballers. So... That's, that's there, so we've got to appreciate the improvements we've made to our team this season. And Shackleton, already getting in behind, trying to cross it for Cavani, didn't really work out there. But 
Yeah, our squad is a lot more competitive this year and that, that's the reason why we're third in the Premier League. More problems for us, more problems for us. We might end up conceding here. Benitez with a really, really good save right there. Still nil-nil, but this, is, this has been a tough game so far. We're hardly creating chances. That was the first chance of the game and Sheffield had it, so we've got to be a bit careful. Once again, Sheffield have broken through here. They've kind of made a mistake. No, they haven't. Stevens with the ball here could shoot, does, but Dest defends that really well. As I said, Sheffield have been the better team. The fatigue is really playing a big factor in this game. I just want to get away from this winter period. It is just so difficult to play with because of all the lack of stamina on your players, but it's the Premier League and we've got to deal with it. There's Brooks now. He's actually been really, really good in this one. Now it is Augustine here. Could go on a good run. Still Augustine. Space for him to shoot maybe. Ah, oh, he hits the side netting from there. But our first real chance of the game and Augustine did come pretty close. Oh my god. They've broken through here. Vargas with a big chance here. Oh my god. That is just chaotic defending. I'm pretty sure someone handled the ball there. But we somehow survived. Benitez did a great job. Halftime comes now at the right moment because we've been struggling here second half we need to be better but i don't know if we can because my players are pretty much dead with their stamina augustine sees brooks and we could hit them on the break here but can brooks break through he can here he goes david brooks 1v1 has to score still david brooks beats one more strikes it well there you go for a moment i thought david brooks messed up there because there was another defender coming in and i thought being cheeky would help which it did ultimately because I went past him as well with a nice shimmy and then Brooks with a composed finish to put us 1-0 up against Sheffield. I'm not going to lie, this is as undeserved as it gets because this was on the break. Sheffield have been hammering us all game long. We come away with one counter and we score off it. But yeah, we've had luck go against us in that game against Chelsea and now we're having a bit of luck our way as well. So I'll take it. Since now Sheffield are chasing the game, the, the game has opened up so, so much. Oh my god, so has their chance to score. What just happened here? What just happened here? Now Sheffield are going to drop back again. What a silly goal to concede. McBurney with the finish. And first of all, how did he get in behind here? Foyt was clear of him. Was it Foyt or was it Ben White? I think it was Foyt. He was clear of him and he still lost that battle. Maybe that's the lack of stamina, lack of fitness during this period, but... Come on, man. You can't get beat like that. That is awful defending. And it's 1-1 against Sheffield now. All that hard work to get the first goal gone. But I'm not going to lie. It's completely deserved because Sheffield have been the better team. Inside now to Calvin Phillips. Can Brooks inspire us once again as he looks to find Augustine here with a fake shot. Still Augustine finds space, shoots and scores. He's a cheat code. Kevin Augustine is a cheat code. This, this, this guy. Wow. From the first season of this career mode, he's been scoring goals like this, beating players, unbelievable finishes, and this is just adding one more to the collection. Brooks picking up another assist. He's been phenomenal in this episode, but what about that for a finish? Weaker left foot, no problem, still in the back of the net, and a bit of magic from Augustine puts us 2-1 up. Here goes Augustine, who is super low on stamina, but he's he's a winner. He's continuously just going on and on and on. And that's another one to add to his collection. Augustine, wow, just wow. How do I even describe this guy? Last season, 19 in the Premier League. And this season, I think he's on, on his way to achieve that again. What a season he's having. He's won us this game practically single-handedly. Well, we got to give Brooks credit as well because he's been phenomenal. But the two of them... They've been here from the very beginning and wow. 3-1 up now against Sheffield. Three points should be secured with that goal. Full time against Sheffield in a game where players' stamina was super low. Winter period but Augustine stepped up. Brooks stepped up. Those two helped us get the job done. Three points secured after of course dropping points against Watford and Chelsea. This is a relief. Oh, would you look at this? Another job offer coming in. This time it's from Villarreal, but I'm not interested, man. They're offering even less money now. We're rejecting it straight up. And also, a youth squad monthly report on our super talented Argentine youngster, Jesus Saavedra. 79 to 96 potential, by the way. Brilliant to see. Hopefully next season we can promote him and he'll be amazing for us. And also, yes, the transfer window is now open and we can do business, which I'm really excited for because I've been talking about signing a certain Spaniard on a pre-contract and I want to get that done before anything else. So let's get to it. Now with Pablo Hernandez aging, being 34, 35, he's going to retire soon, probably at the end of this season. We need a replacement for him and I cannot look further than Thiago. 
He's also at the stage of his career where he's probably looking for a new challenge. We at Leeds have built a team that can compete in the Premier League against even the top teams, so it's not as unrealistic as you think in context to the season we're having, so... We're gonna get this done. Thiago at about 160,000 per week I feel is worth it, especially since we won't have to pay a transfer fee. So let's start negotiating and see if we can tempt the Spaniard to join Leeds. I think this is gonna be difficult. This is gonna be really difficult to negotiate. We're gonna give him that crucial squad role. Now, I'm not sure if we've got enough money to make this happen, but we'll see. We'll have to hope for the best. We'll offer him a three-year deal because I think he will accept that. Imagine our midfield with Calvin Phillips. James and Thiago. James and Thiago have played before at Bayern, so they'll have a bit of chemistry. But that midfield with Brooks as well, oh my god. What a team we'll have for next season. So, no release loss. That works absolutely fine for me. Okay, now, these are his demands. If we remove the goal bonus, I'm not gonna lie. Pretty good. Can't complain. So, we'll adjust the wage budget. We'll give him 140. This should work. I think this is gonna work. 140,000. 1.2 million signing bonus. Can we convince Thiago to join? Let's see. We can. There you go. Thiago Alcantara to, of course, Leeds United for next season is a done deal. Replacement for Pablo Hernandez has been found. Oh my God, is that a fantastic transfer. Our first 11 next season, I think, is going to have all 80 plus rated players. And that's big. And you know what's the best part of pre-contract signings? We're still left with money to do more because it doesn't affect our wage budget. It does affect our transfer budget because we've already paid the bonus to, of course, Thiago. But we can definitely get done with more. So let me know in the comment section what more pre-contract signings we need to do. For now, we're going to end off the episode as we are doing pretty well. we'll... Now, the best part about these pre-contract signings, well, they don't affect our wage budget. So we can effectively make more and more pre-contract signings. I probably don't want to make too many because I know it's kind of unrealistic. I definitely want to make one more which we're going to aim to do in the next episode. Let me know who you guys think we should help bring for next season in the comment section below. We have dropped down a spot in the Premier League with, of course, that result, but still fourth in the Premier League is a phenomenal position to be in. I don't know if we've got enough in the tank to secure Champions League football because Chelsea are right behind us, but... For us to be fourth in the league at this stage of the season is bonkers. Another fairly decent episode for our season objectives. We've made more progress with the dynamic duo challenge. Just six goals more from Cavani and Augustine and we'll be done with that. Player of the episode discussion. Honestly, can only see two players nominated for this one. One of them being Brooks, the other one Augustine. I mean, this guy just scored a brace in that previous game. Brooks was superb all episode long. And yeah, it's between the two of them. Let me know in the comment section who you prefer. Not gonna lie, a lot happened in this episode with my FIFA crushing forced to simulate that game against Leicester. Funny enough, that's the game that we won. We drop points in stupid fashion, but ultimately we end off on a high with that game where Augustine scored a brace and signing Thiago on a pre-contract. So it's a big win today. And with that, we're wrapping up today's episode. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here. Next episode, we continue with all the transfer madness. And well, I'll see you all next time.